All right, everyone, I think we're going to go ahead and get started here. We're uh, just after nine o'clock. We still have some people popping on, but today we have uh, Lisa with Snap NHD. She's going to show us uh, some, I guess, some productivity things here in uh, zip forms. I know they just keep adding more and more to this, and uh, it's <laughs> it, it can get a little overwhelming, I'm sure, for, for most of us. I know every time I go in there, it seems like there's something new, but there's definitely a lot of things in there that can make our lives easier for, uh, uh, you know, getting getting our offers out and our, and our listing agreements and everything else. So she's going to show us uh, some, some tips and tricks and hopefully some good productivity stuff. Yes, thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Yes, I mean, my name is Lisa and I'm with SNAP NHD. Um, again, apologize for the voice. I've been a little bit under the weather, so <laughs> good thing this is on Zoom. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do for you guys today is show you guys how to set up your templates. So I don't, I'm not sure if that's something you guys um, utilize through zip forms, um, but it is very, very helpful for you guys so that you don't have to continually fill in all your information when you go in to do, you know, your RPA or, or your um, listing agreement or anything like that. So I'm going to share my screen. If you guys, what, what usually happens when I do these is um, the agents actually follow along on their, with their laptops and they just go ahead and and as I'm walking through how to create the cover sheet and different things, they fill it in as we go along. So is that something that you guys are able to do or, or would like to do? Or would you just like me just to walk through everything and you guys kind of take notes? Um, I guess go ahead and just walk through. And then if they're on their laptops and they want to do it, um, they might be able to minimize the window and uh, kind of follow along and set up the templates and everything as they go. Perfect, perfect. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take my time. I'll go slow. If you guys, you know, have any questions, just stop me um, okay. as we go here. So, all right. Okay. So, if everybody goes, if you would like to go into your zip forms, um, usually it, it comes up on the transaction page, as you know. So what we're going to be talking about today um, specifically is just the templates. So you would go over here and click the templates. And I have already, for the, for the sake of time, I've already created these, but I'm still going to walk you through um, how to do it. Okay, so if you go to your templates, what we're going to create first is a cover sheet. So you would go to new and you would click on new and we'll start with um, a new purchase because you'll want one for the new purchase or and you'll also want one for a new listing. So you'll want to do a cover sheet for both. So we're going to start with the new purchase and you click on that. What we suggest is you type in here because this is going to be your master template um, you can name it anything you would like, but just to keep it separate from your other templates, you know, we suggest going ahead and calling it your master tip template. So this one would be, you know, your master purchase template is what you would type in here. Okay. So once you have that in there, then you, of course, we're going to click residential. And this one is for you, it's personal, personal. So, and what this is, is the differences here is if you clicked, let's say that you wanted to do one for your whole office. And so you were going to have a master one for your whole office you would click that. And so then everyone in your office would have the same um, template. So the majority of the offices, you know, don't use the global or the office, they just use the personal. So that's why we just have you click the personal. We also suggest that you click the do not automatically apply this template to new transactions. The reason is if you clicked one of these other ones, 
um, everything that you put on the on this template that we're going to create would go onto all of your different RPAs and your different um, your different. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm losing my thought. <laughs> my, your, 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 your agreements. Yes. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Packages. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, no um, so we don't want that because even though you're making a cover sheet with things that you do want to go onto your RPA or your listing agreement, there are going to be some things that would um, not apply to the, to all of your transactions. So just make sure that you click the do not, and then you will click save which I'm not gonna do that because I've already done that, but you guys would go ahead and click save, okay? Once you click save, <clears throat> your screen should look like this, but without these. <laughs> so if you come over here to all forms and click on all forms, you will see up here, <clears throat> that they have the three most important things, right? Your cover sheet, your listing agreement, and your per and your RPA. So right now we're going to create the cover sheet. So go ahead and click on the cover sheet. But before we I get out of this screen, I just want to show you guys. <clears throat> As you can see here, this is ev everything that you need is in this little drop down. So if you're searching for a certain form or a certain letter or something, you will find it here. So you could type in, a, you know, the first, you could type in anything here just to find it. Like for instance, if you were looking for the FHDS, the new form, you could type that in here <clears throat> and there it is, it pops up for you. Okay, so anything that you, you're looking for, you can look for it in here if it's any kind of form or letter that you're needing for your transaction. But as you can see, they make it easy for us here and put these top three at the top for us. So go ahead and click on cover sheet. Once you click on the cover sheet, you'll see it pop up over here. So then I want you to click on that. <coughs> Okay, now cover sheets. A lot of times people don't use them, <laughs> but they're actually super, super helpful for you because if you guys have a team of people that you use, then you can add all that information on your cover sheet. And then it is going to be transferred over to your RPA or your listing agreement for you every single time. So it's saving time for you and so that you don't have to fill these things out. So here's a, a little helpful hint here. If you have bad eyes like I do, there's this little button up here that says full screen. Go ahead and push on that. Makes it nice and big for us. And then the other thing we're going to start with here is these little boxes. So if you have clients that actually like to actually sign a hard copy, then that's when we suggest go ahead and, and mark all of these little boxes because it's going to show everybody where they need to sign the buyer and the seller. It's going to show them where they need to sign on your RPA. So you would just go through and click all these little boxes and then you'll see that the little green X's and the little red X's will pop in there. And all of this information obviously is not stuff that we know right now. So we're leaving all of that blank because we don't need to add that information in there. So the things that, that here's some examples of part of your team. If you wanna add this information, if you use, if you like to use an escrow company and you use them consistently, you can type their name in up here we also suggest putting on here or seller's preference. And the reason is, is because more than not, they're not gonna argue if you already have an escrow officer on your RPA. So they're just gonna go with it. But when you, if, if it's somebody that also loves to use their own escrow person, because you put or seller's preference, then they're gonna they're gonna see it, see it and they're gonna be like okay you know 
no, we actually want to use mine. And they're going to know that you're good with that because you wrote that in there. So go ahead and if you have um, an escrow company and person that you use, go ahead and type them in here. Add their, this is all the information you will need for them. You only need their address. I mean, as you can see, I've made something up here. <laughs> um, you'll want to add, you know, your escrow officer's name and your escrow officer's phone number. If you have your escrow officer's direct phone number, put it in here. If not, you can just put the office name. It's okay because you do have her name. And of course, add his or her email address. So back up real quick to the uh, the check boxes. Um, if you have those checked, that's for when you print. Then it'll say a little sign here tab. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Exactly. So if 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 you know that you have a client that likes a hard copy, which either way, I would just check these boxes because even if you don't do a hard copy, even if you do an e sign, it doesn't matter. It's okay because X's will just be there. It's it's not you know, it's here nor there, you know, okay. but go ahead and mark those because yes, if you do print out a copy, then you will see when I, when we go to the RPA, I'll show you where you will see these little X's for your clients because okay. they, so they yeah, they will transfer over to all of the places where the buyer or seller needs to sign. All right, and then back to escrow. <clears throat> I'll just wait a couple of minutes just in case any of you guys are walking through this. I mean, unless, if nobody is actually doing that, then I can keep going. I don't, I don't know if there's a way for us maybe to find out. I don't mind waiting. I, this is what I do, so. <laughs> um, I think we can... Probably move along. Fernando had a question. He said, can you please show how to add an additional buyer? Um, up here. That would be my guess. Yeah. Yes. Oh, buyer two, buyer one. There you go. Yes. So there are two different places. Yeah. There's two different places here for your buyer. And then there's also two different places for the seller. <laughs> And again, right now, this is your cover sheet. So you don't want to enter in the buyer or seller information on your cover sheet. And the reason is, is because your cover, like I said, your cover sheet is going to, every single time, once you create a cover sheet, every single time you go in to create an RPA or a listing agreement, all of this information is going to go onto your RPA or your listing agreement. So obviously we're gonna have different buyer and sellers, right? So don't right now on this cover sheet, don't put in the buyer and the seller information. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, because this is this is the master one, correct? Yes, this is yeah, your so, master one. So we don't actually wanna do that on here, Fernando. Um, this is just for the master one to copy through on all of your templates as you move forward. Correct. That is correct. And thank you for the question. Yeah, and you can stop me anytime with any others. So that's why I said like all of this stuff here, none of that is going to be filled out right now. It's actually a good, uh, good question from Paul. Do we input broker info on both sections for sellers and buyer and then delete the one that we don't use? Up here. Uh, let me is see. There... I think I know where he is. Let me go down here. So there we go. Okay. So since this one is the RPA, we're doing the RPA, right? So this is the buyer broker information. So right now, that's why this cover sheet is only for the buyer broker. So it's for the RPA. The next cover sheet that we do is going to be the listing agreement. So then you would put in the, your information here. Okay, so right now, this particular cover sheet is your master purchase agreement. So that's where we're going to be, you know, we're doing this for purchasing a property, right? So this is the buyer. So you're on the buyer side. So go ahead and, and put all of your information in here. 
your firm name, your address, the, your phone, and make sure you put your phone number, of course, your name. You can put your cell phone number here and your um, email address and then your the DRE license on both of these as well. So everything you see here is what you need to fill out for this particular one. <clears throat> and so you'll leave this blank because that's what we're going to do next. When we're done with this cover sheet, then we'll do the listing agreement, the master listing agreement cover sheet. <clears throat> Right. Okay. So you'll enter in all of that information. So that's your, your office DRE license number, and then you as the agent, your license number. And then continue down here. If you have a lender that you always like to use, you can go ahead and put their information in here. And again, you can put or seller's preference after you type their name in. The reason why I keep these two blank is because a lot, I've learned that a lot of agents, they, they really don't have a preferred lender or appraisal person. So that's why I leave those blank. But if you do, go ahead and add their information in and just make sure to put or seller's preference after. Title companies seem, you know, title and escrow, of course, again, it seems like, excuse me, I'm sorry, this is for more of up north. Up north and down south, they have title and escrow separate. So that's why I have this here. Again, pest control, that's pretty open. So you, I mean, you really don't need to put anything there. Um, whoever you use for your uh, natural hazard disclosure, I mean, I, I would love for you guys to use SNAP and HD. And if you ever have any questions about SNAP and HD, I would love to do a separate class and, and or today, if you guys have time and explain more about what we do. Um, I work with a lot of teams and I just appreciate being a part of that team. And it's really good to have a, somebody that you trust and that you work with for the natural hazard disclosures. Um, because it is something that is required in every single transaction. You know, it's something you should order with your prelim and your TDS. And so having that, you know, um, upfront, having that person that you can go to seven days a week is super important. Um, so if you do have someone that you use, go ahead and type them in there. I would love for you to use Snap and HD if you, if you would choose to. And also your home warranty. You can type that information in there as well. So would that auto populate? You know, there's the drop down, I guess, when you're when you're going through the contract of you know choose your provider. It'll automatically just put that in there for the warranty and the NHD. Yes, if you type it, if you type this in here like this. Then when you go to, I'll show you, when you go to your RPA, it'll automatically be there. Okay, cool. So you don't have to work, uh, you know, do anything with a drop down. Nope. No, okay. it's just there. That's, that's what's so wonderful about cover sheets <laughs> is, you know, you've got your team that you work with, you fill all this information in and, uh, and it's there for you. So, I mean, of course, you're, once you get to the RPA, you're still going to have to, you know, fill in some additional information once your transaction has opened. Um, but at least a lot of the guts of the information that, that is needed is already there for you. So does anybody have any questions? Because that's the end of our cover sheet for this master purchase agreement. Does anybody have any questions on this cover sheet right now? If you do, you could just throw them in chat guys and then we will uh, we'll answer them as we go. And if you're looking for the chat button, it's down at the bottom of the screen. And if you go over here, you'll see your little button and it says save. So click save. You want to make sure that you save everything that you did here. 
All right, so now your cover sheet for your purchase agreement is done. So what we wanna do now is you should be back on this page. And on your page, you should only see the cover sheet. So go back up here to forms and click on the residential purchase agreement. Once you click on that, you'll see it right here. <clears throat> let's open that up and let's make it a full screen again. <coughs> so here is our RPA. So if you guys scroll down, you will see that all the information that you typed in on your cover sheet is now <clears throat> on your RPA. Let's continue down here. And I don't know why my little X's aren't there. Hold on one second. Let me. <clears throat> hmm. That's interesting. Let's see. I think it has to do with the last one. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There, there they are. So there's your, your little X's like I had mentioned. Um, more information that you had typed in. If you go further down, there's more. And here it just fills in, auto populates it for you. The rest of this information obviously is, is to every you know transaction. So those are things that you would need to fill out <clears throat> once you get open up your transaction. But as you can see here, if you did type in your natural hazard dis disclosure company, there it is right there for you. <clears throat> Same with your home warranty. So it just goes through and adds all of that stuff in there for you, okay? So now let's go back up here to the top a little bit. Um, let's say that you are an expert at, with this RPA. I mean, you know it, you know, very, very easily. You, you don't need to see all of this writing and all this kind of stuff. You know, you know everything about it. So here is a different way um, for you to fill out the RPA if you're really comfortable with it. You see this little button up here that says fast fill? <coughs> Click on that. And what you see here is what it does is it takes out all the verbiage. And all it does is it leaves you with everything that either might need a check mark <clears throat> might need a signature, might need something to be filled in. Okay. So it just takes a, it just takes away all the all the wording, all the verbiage, and leaves you with everything that needs to be filled out. So if you're comfortable with the RPA and if you just want to get, you know, get going and get this thing filled out, then you can press that fast fill. To go back, <clears throat> just click on viewer. <clears throat> okay. All right. So now, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Let's, now that you have gone through your RPA, you have filled out everything that needs to be filled out on the RPA. But you don't want any, now that you're done filling it all out, you don't want there to be any uh, lines just blank. You know, so what they give you up here is an NA button. So once you're once you've gone through and you've filled everything out, you can click on this NA and you click on apply. And then you see here it's gonna put in NA just just in the places where maybe there wasn't something that needed to be filled out, but just to give everybody a peace of mind that you know, somebody can't add something in there. If the NA is there, then we know that nothing needs to be written in in these places. 
It's a convenient one. I've actually never noticed that one up there. Yeah. So if you click on it again and just hit remove, then it takes them off. <coughs> All right, so that is um, the end of our RPA. So let's go back. Go back to your template button because now we're going to do one for your map for a listing template. So then you have both. If you're ever represent, if you're on the seller side or the buyer side, you have both. So again, you'll just do the same thing we did before. Click new. This time you're gonna click new listing and you're gonna call this one your master listing template. You would type that in. <clears throat> again, residential, everything else is good. So you'll click save. All right, and then go to all forms again and click on cover sheet. And then click on your cover sheet there. And then again, you're this time instead of, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's go down here. This time, instead of writing your information here, <clears throat> remember I had said, now you're gonna in enter it here. You leave this one blank and you enter in all your information here on the seller side. And then you now just, on those X's that you had up top, sorry. Um, yeah. We still have green and red. Yeah. Um, should those be switched around? Um, is now we're asking the seller to sign or are we just assigning colors to buyer and seller? Yeah, it, it's just a generalized color scheme that that zip form does. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So either there's an X or no X. Right. So you can. Okay. So you can't yeah. change color of the X. No. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately. Just making sure. Yeah. This yeah. is just okay. what, they, what they give you. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So. So then, yes, you just go through again. Fill out all your information. <clears throat> fill out everything. Like you did before as you go down. And then once you're complete with all of that, then you would go back to all forms again and click on the listing agreement. <clears throat> when it pops up, you click on it here. And again, you will see that everything is transferred over to the listing agreement. <clears throat> All right, any questions on that? Mm, it doesn't look like we have any in the chat yet. So, I, so um, yeah. there is one thing and, and I wish I could show you guys, but I'm, I'm not able to access this on you know, myself, um, you guys can as agents, you guys have MLS connect We're on here, correct? Um, yeah, and as a, that was actually going to be my next question is if you can uh, show us that real quick, but I guess you well, might not have that. So that is something that unfortunately I can't show you because I'm not an authorized user to do so. Um, but that being said, um, Annie and I have another class set up for you guys on February 23rd. Okay. With our, um, our chief of compliance officer, his name is Larry. He, um, he has access. He's, he's like the zip forms guru. <laughs> okay. So, um, he has access and he will be able to show you that. Plus he will be able to go over so much more with you guys, like everything about zip forms. Um, so, which is going to be really nice because, um, he's been doing, he's trained and, and sort of, I'm certified on templates. He's trained and certified on everything with Zipforms because he's been doing it for so many years. Um, but I do know what's cool about the MLS connect is, um, if you put in the, the name, if you put in the address on where, you know, on the MLS connect, 
all of the information on your listing will come up. It's, it's just the coolest thing I've ever seen. So I can't wait for Larry to show that to you guys. Yeah. Um, so that'll be good because then it, it'll auto pop the, uh, uh, well, the, the cooperating brokerage, I guess, depending yes. on which side you're on. Yes. Uh, all that info in there that we, we usually can't seem to find complete info on. <laughs> it, no, it's true. It's, it's yeah. very true. And so it's so helpful for you guys. And, um, and so he will definitely go over all that on the 23rd. So definitely be, um, be, you know, be, a, be able to come to that class because he'll be able to give you guys so much, so much information. Okay. Yeah. So, that'll be a good one. Yeah. Um, and I guess, so I guess for everybody, if you, if you're doing maybe some more land sales or other things like that, that you use on a regular, you can set up additional templates too, just like you did here. So I guess if it was going to be a land or something, would, would that be correct, Lisa? Um, so would, would you want to put like your disclosures and stuff in here too, in your master or not? Yeah. So for, if, if just, just property, just land, are you talking about? Well, I'm just saying, how, would we, if, if you're taking a land listing, uh, maybe you specialize in land or something, would you want a third template in here for land to? Um, well, no. Because or or other types of property. Yeah, no, because the the either way, it's going to be either a listing agreement or a purchase agreement. So, and you're going to use, you know, the same information and the same everything that you have in your cover sheet. You will use for those as well. So it's you can just have, you know, your two cover sheets, and that's it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let me see. <laughs> So if also they have... see there is a pager number section. What is that? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Paul says there's a pager number section. What is that? Oh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't they, so. have they even have fax number on there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wow. It's really funny. But so, if you guys okay. would like, I mean, I can, um, I mean, I don't know how much time you guys have, but if there isn't any further questions on this, um, I could go over just a little bit about what who Snap and HD is in case there are people that do not know who we are. <laughs> um, yeah, we can. Um, yeah, let's do that real quick as well. Okay. We have a little time. All right. That would be great. Maybe what the difference is because, you know, we have we have all these choices on the drop down. So, yes, yes. And I know I, I have some. I have a couple amazing um, agents, you know, Marty and Annie, and that have been so loyal and wonderful, and I appreciate them so much. So I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you ever have any questions, you know, definitely ask either of them, um, and they can kind of, you know, they're a good reference. <laughs> So just real quick, as you know, like I mentioned, um, the three main reports that are, are required in all real estate transactions are the TDS, the prelim, and the NHD. It's super important to include that NHD when you're ordering at the time of listing, just in case there is something to be disclosed on the property. We want you guys to know upfront, instead of waiting till escrow, and then the possibility of the buyer backing out because of something that they don't like what they see in the NHD because it gives them three days um, to be able to back out of that deal if they do see something that they don't like. So with Snap and HD, there is no fee until the only if and when it closes escrow. So there's no harm, no foul in ordering at the time of listing. You know, you can put it in your file, you can attach it to your listing, um, even on the buyer side, knowing, you know, for your buyers, everything for the, about that property, having that NHD and so that everyone is educated. We, um, two big reasons, of course, is because of the fire and the flood. Um, you know, those are two, two things that could possibly uh, need extra insurance. And so we want to know if the property is in either one of those right from the get-go. Like I said, there is no risk at ordering at the time of listing. You can cancel any time. Um, we won't bug you with a bunch of emails trying to get money from you for the report. Um, once it's sent to you, that's it. We won't bug you again. So <clears throat> in the NHD, as you know, um, like I said, the special flood area is super important. The high fire, wildland, those are the main ones around here. 
um, you know, the dam inundation, potential flooding. Um, those are the main ones around here that we see. <clears throat> we have two different reports, the standard report, um, and, and in our standard, it's going to include, of course, all the potential hazards, the six different potential hazards. It will include all the taxes, anything, any taxes on the property, the Melarus, um, you know, everything that might be on that property will be included in there. Um, we, we source all of our data straight from FEMA. So we're on top of it 24 seven on all of the information plus local data. It's important also to have local data because there are local disclosures. I don't know if any of you guys do any <clears throat> transactions in Tulare County, but they have a local disclosure for the oak tree. If, you, if your client is wanting to buy a piece of property that has an oak tree on it, then let's say that the property is open piece of land and they wanna build a home and they wanna build the home right where that oak tree is. Well, they cannot cut down that oak tree. You, there is a huge, huge fine for if you if you kill or cut down oak trees. <laughs> so, little side note there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the environmental that includes everything the standard does, um, but it also just includes anything like the leaking underground tanks or any hazardous waste or solid waste landfills. <clears throat> the key points I like to say for and for the NHD, this is what I I like to tell my agents to look for. Is is the property in a flood zone? Is the property in a high to severely high fire zone? which in turn would need the FHDS form by car, which that is something that we include in our report. We are the only NHD company that is licensed by car to provide that form for you in our report if it's applicable. And so the other thing that we include in our report is flood certificates. If, the, if there is a flood certificate on file for the property, that will also be included in the NHD for you. The other thing is, are there any local disclosures? You definitely wanna check for all six zones. Melarus, Melarus is something that pops up and sometimes can kill a deal because Melarus is under the tax info. So that's something that would be added on to their payment, right? So if there's a Melarus and it's an extra $150 to $200 for that Melarus, that could push them over and they could not be able to afford that house. <clears throat> so knowing the tax information, knowing if there's any Melarus is super important. So um, the, real quick, Paul was asking, uh, what is the flood cert? The flood certificate is provided if the property is in a flood zone. So let's say that the property is in a flood zone and there's a flood certificate on file. That certificate is going to tell you which zone that house is in. So if it's in X or if it's in A, which X is okay, the others are not, <laughs> the others would need flood insurance. Um, so it's going to tell you which zone that home is in. So it's really important to know that because then we need to know if flood insurance is going to be needed. The other thing that's on that flood certificate is there's a little box that tells you if there is an elevation certificate on file. What that means, that's a good thing. We want to see that because that means that the owner of that property either had the property elevated, like there was, like they brought, before they built the home, they, they knew that the, that the land was in a flood zone, but they br brought in dirt and they built the structure higher. So they built it out of the flood zone. So the home, the structure is actually no longer in the flood zone. And they had somebody come out and do this elevation certificate which then in turn took them out of having to have flood insurance. Okay, so that all that information is going to be on that flood certificate for you. Any other questions about the flood certificate? Doesn't look like it. Okay. 
So SNAP NHD, I like to use the acronym, simple now, accuracy, price, and I also like to say protection. It's simple because our report is APN specific. So you're not going to get a bunch of information that does not pertain to your property. You're gonna get all the information that you need for your specific property. It's also simple because we have a snapshot page. That snapshot page is the second page of our report. It's going to tell you anything that is either in or out of you know, either one of the zones or anything that needs to be disclosed about the property. It's gonna tell you on that snapshot page. It's also going to tell you the estimated property tax at the bottom. It's also going to tell you if there's a Mela Ruse. So that snapshot page is kind of nice because <clears throat> you know right off the get-go the things that you need to go and look and read in the report. Instead of having to go through the entire report, you're going to know that if it says in, that those are the things that you need to go and read to make sure it's not something that you need to share with your client. Now, it's because we deliver our reports in seconds. We are a tech-based company, so we are able to get these reports out to you guys within seconds. I mean, if it's, if it's a funky APN, it might take three minutes, but there's no reason for you guys to ever have to wait for an NHD. Plus, I work seven days a week, just like you guys do. So if you're over a weekend, if you're going to look at a potential listing and you need that NHD to know what you're getting into, call, text, or email me. I will send that NHD over to you. I, I do it multiple times for my clients. I don't mind at all. I don't mind getting texts on weekends. I am here to help you. So just if you ever need anything, know that I'm available for you guys seven days a week. The accuracy, like I stated, was, um, you know, we're on top of it with FEMA um, every single day. We're on top of our local disclosures. So everything in our report is accurate. And our price is the most affordable in the industry. It's $69.95 for the standard and $89.95 for the environmental our protection also, we have a $20 million um, e &O insurance policy, which it's nice that it's there for you guys, which means if for some reason, if there was anything ever, you know, a discrepancy in our NHD, we would take full responsibility and you guys would not have to do anything. You guys wouldn't have to show up in court. You wouldn't have to do anything. We would take care of everything, you, your brokerage, all of escrow, anybody that was involved in the transaction would not be involved in it at all. We would handle it 100%. That being said, I will tell you that in the last, you know, 25 to 30 years, there has been five NHD lawsuits. So it does not happen very often, <laughs> which is a good thing. But, there, but there's always the risk, right? <laughs> there's, you just, you never know, right? Yeah, you, you never know. know. So it's nice that it's there. I will tell you that we were not one of those five. <laughs> so well, that's good to know. <laughs> side note. <laughs> yep. um, so this is just kind of a, a rundown of everything, you know, that I had stated pre previously. Um, a really cool thing that is happening right now is we are getting um, reports in Spanish. So that is in the works. That is almost finished. So for your Spanish speaking uh, clients, we will have that. Okay, cool. And just a reminder for everyone, you know, that the NHD is something that we need to provide along with the seller disclosures. Um, I know it seems like, uh, you know, every once in a while, they, they kind of seem to go out a little later. They're, they're a last minute, oh, I forgot. But this is, you know, it's a statutory and it's, it's really important to get these out. So um, like she said, she, she gets these out, you know, within seconds. So you know, have your TC or, or whoever, you know, get this ordered up right away, you know, maybe when you're taking the listing or, you know, right after you get your offer, whenever you do your disclosures to also do these. Absolutely. Yes. It, it is a very true statement. It is, it is a mandatory um, disclosure that is needed. Um, so just, that's why I always like to say, just make it one of your top three, you know, your TDS, your prelim, your NHD. And it's done. You're, um, if you work with a TC, they can contact me. Our website is super, super easy to use as well. 
Um, but I really, I don't mind placing orders myself. Um, so I have a lot of TCs. I have a lot of agents that contact me directly. And I get to, I can send it over to you. I can send it over to your escrow officer. I can send it to your TC. I can send it to another agent. Anybody that you specify that you want it sent to, I can do that for you. So this is our snapshot page that I explained to you. As you can see where it says in, you would wanna to go to the table of contents and see where you see in. And actually, if you click on that, on the table of contents, we're a smart report. So it's going to take you directly to that page and so that you're able to read it and see you know, what it says about any additional disclosures. As you can see here, um, you see the little wave, you see the little fire. There, this one is not in a flood zone. It is in a high to very high severity zone, which means that the new FHDS will be in this report. Um, this right here actually is um, an example of the, um, if you see on, on the first page of the signature page where it says a special flood hazard area, and if it says yes, you'll see a little asterisk there that's circled with the arrow that says a flood certificate has been provided. So that you will see that um, so that you know if there's a flood certificate in the report for you. This is the flood certificate here. So if you look at that top arrow, <clears throat> that is the box where um, I talked about the elevation certificate. Um, so it's called LOMOC. Um, if it is marked yes, then that is a good thing. That means that there is an elevation certificate on file and that there will not need to be flood insurance for your client. This is the new FHDS form by CAR that, like I had mentioned, will be provided for you in the report um, if it's applicable. <clears throat> and there's our pricing. Um, this is a certificate of the insurance that I had mentioned to you as well. So if your brokerage decided to just use SNAP and HD and, it, and if it makes you feel comfortable to have a copy of this certificate, we would provide it for you. We would put your name down there in the certificate holder so that you know as a brokerage that your whole brokerage is covered under our insurance. So here's just a little bit more information for you guys. Does anybody have any questions at all for me about SNAP and HD? I don't see any coming up in the, uh, in the chat here. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys um, letting me talk a little bit more about SNAP and HD. If, like I said, if you ever have any questions, I do a lot of one-on-ones. -on -one um, I do new agent training. I, you know, just do the, the key points to the NHD. I will, I will go through the entire NHD with anybody, um, you know, that wants to do that. So, um, yes, I am based out of Fresno. I actually cover, I, I, I live in the Fresno area. I'm out at Riverstone actually on Avenue 12 and 41. Um, but I cover Fresno County, Kings County, Madera County, and I also cover Santa Clara County. So I- but That doesn't uh, mean you can't call her if you're outside of that area, right? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, wherever you are, um, because, you know, I'm working with people within your brokerage, wherever you are, I can, I can work with you in, in any area. So anywhere in California. So, awesome. yeah. And I think, uh, you know, thanks for the, the, the extra, you know, showing us where the, uh, the flood cert and the fire is. You know, I think a lot of times we, we're in a hurry and we're not looking at these reports, but, you know, especially with the new RPA and how insurance uh, is included in the inspection uh, contingency time, um, you know, the ability to obtain insurance. If you have this NHD uh, quickly right up front or, you know, on that listing side, that can help derail a deal uh, due to insurance because you'll know uh, about the fire, about the flood, things like that. So, you know, take a, take a few minutes to look through that, that uh, I guess the snapshot page, that's, that's really convenient to see, you know, if you have any potential issues of insurability. 
that uh, could come up. Absolutely, yeah. You will know within the first two pages, you know, of the NHT, those two things. If there's an issue with flood or if there's an issue with fire. Yep. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you uh, coming on. Um, we'll uh, get set up for the, the uh, I guess, the follow-up. Is it forms? I think we're doing that next month. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll have to look no, at the schedule cool. again, but, uh, you know, that I know you're happen. under the weather, but I, I appreciate you powering through and you know, oh, still doing that presentation. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with my my voice here. But um, yeah. yeah, no, I appreciate this very much. I thank you guys. And and just a little, you know, if you guys do need anything, if you need an or to order, um, just again, our website is super easy. But I do I do love to place orders for my clients. So I put my information in the chat. Um, so if you go in the chat, you will find my email and my phone number. Um, and you can contact me anytime I can place any orders. And like I said, I can send it to anybody you need. Um, also, one thing that we do um, is, which is something that I have set up for Marty, is what I call auto ordering. And what that means is as soon as your um, listing hits the MLS, within a 24 hour period, you will re automatically receive the NHD. I, it will be emailed to you. So it, the reason I, we do this too is because a lot of agents, they just don't even want to think about it. And so they appreciate that once they know that once their listing hits the MLS, that it's going to be, it's going to be in their email and they can, you know, transfer it over to their, to their TC or put it in their file. So if auto order is something that anybody would be interested in, just shoot me an email. I just, all I need is just your information and I can get you set up and it will be taken care of for you. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that's, I actually didn't know about that service. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Hey, one less thing to think about, right? <laughs> We're yeah, trying definitely. to make your life a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Cause these ones do slip through the cracks every now and then. So yeah. Awesome. Well, um, oh, Paul didn't see the contact. I'll uh, repost the contact again, Paul. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste it right now. Oh, perfect. Thank you. And I'll send that out in the uh, in the replay as well. So, okay. all right. Well, thanks again, Lisa. Um, we'll go ahead and wrap up and uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch. All right. Sounds good. Thank you very much. You guys have a great day today. You too. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye.